on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Coming up at 11, a young East Tennessee firefighter dies in a crash while responding to another crash. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Many are mourning the loss of a young East Tennessee firefighter killed in a rollover crash. Captain Roy Sewell Jr. has spent nearly 10 years with the North Tazewell Volunteer Fire Department. That's not far from the Kentucky border in Claiborne County, Tennessee. Now people who knew him best are remembering the 27-year-old for his life of service. Kristen Allen has the story. 27-year-old Captain Roy Sewell Jr. was someone every fire department would want on their team. If you want to strive to be like somebody, that's who it should be. The chief of North Tazewell Volunteer Fire Department, Leroy Brandt, says Captain Sewell was going on his 10th year as a firefighter and did everything he could to keep people smiling. He was um, someone who definitely believed in, in serving his fellow man. He liked to talk a lot. I mean, any, you ask anybody, he loved to talk, but he, he's always, ha always happy always trying to make others happy. Monday was a busy day for firefighters and EMTs in Claiborne County. According to Chief Brandt, Captain Sewell was responding to an ATV accident involving a child. Crews had decided to use a helicopter to transport the child. Sewell was on his way to the scene. His last real radio message on the, on the radio was, hey, where do you need me? THP says Sewell ran off the right side of the roadway and flipped the fire truck down an embankment. And with that big truck, you get a tired off the road uh, and there's nothing you can do. Now the volunteer fire department and community is remembering its captain and friend. We came back from the scene last night. We had our parking lot was full of people here that firemen that came to show their support. Chief Brandt says he'll miss Sewell's laugh, his helping hand, but most of all, he'll miss his heart. All you had to do was ask him for help. He'd be there. If it all possible, he'd be there. In Tazewell, Kristen Allen, WVLT News. Funeral arrangements are not complete yet. One boy is dead following a weekend ATV crash in southwest Virginia. It happened Sunday night just before 7 in the Bold Camp section of Pound. When first responders arrived, they found the boy, who was not identified because of his age, was killed in the crash. No other details about the crash were released. Wise County Public School Superintendent Mike Goforth confirmed the boy was a seventh grade student at one of the district schools. Well, it was a slightly milder day today throughout the region, but not quite back to average. Here's where we ended up today. Temperatures in the low, or I should say middle and even upper 60s throughout the region. Pike a little cooler at 61. Same thing in Logan and even cooler than that, 57 in Wise. We remain on the chillier side as we head through the evening hours. Now, some folks have already fallen into the low to mid 40s. Others hanging tough in the 50s. The valley location are going to have that best bet at seeing the potential for some of that uh, frost tonight. In fact, let's pull up the map and you can see once the map gets itself together there, a uh, frost advisory in place for our Kentucky River Valley counties and into the Big Sandy as we head through tonight. So if you've got the plants covered up from last night, Go ahead and kind of keep them covered up or keep them close to the house tonight if you can. Low 40s to start tomorrow, but another milder one. Not quite to average yet as we head into tomorrow. But I have some cooler weather on the way. The details on that in a few minutes, Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. Natural disasters have, of course, ravaged Kentucky during the last year and a half from tornadoes to floods. But during those efforts, state leaders learned Kentucky is the only state in the south that does not have a state organized search and rescue team. The governor held a bill signing ceremony today for a bill that changes that. It sets up a search and rescue office within the state emergency management agency. That office will be able to coordinate search and rescue resources from fire departments stationed all across the state. The goal is to get search and rescue teams on the ground faster. We can take that response to another level with this organization, with the type of cooperation between uh, different groups across Kentucky, we can be there for one another. 
Search and rescue teams from across the country help search for people following the Mayfield tornado and the flooding here in eastern Kentucky. Kentucky search and rescue workers also saved lives, but they say it took longer to coordinate their response. A former Southern Kentucky superintendent was indicted for bringing a gun on school property. The Lexington Herald Leader reports a grand jury indicted former McCreary County Superintendent John Gunn. Gunn resigned from his position in February. The day after his resignation, he went to the building to grab his belongings, saying he forgot he had the gun on him. The gun is indicted on a felony charge and could serve up to five years in prison if convicted. Earlier today, Partners for Rural Impact Appalachia staff hosted an event at Kane Kitchen in Letcher County. PRI staff says they were recently awarded two major grants for Letcher County Public Schools and Jenkins Independent. Associate VP of PRI, Eamon Couch, says their goal for the event was to bring community leaders together to help them utilize the funding to its maximum potential. It's been really fun to hear them talk and dream and imagine and think about what's possible 10 years down the road. Uh, because these grants, 50 new jobs to Letcher County, which is amazing, uh, resources, uh, uh, manpower, focus, attention, um, it's going to get some national attention. Couch says the two new grants will provide the county $45 million during the next five years. Judy's Place for Kids in Pikeville is just one of numerous child advocacy centers across the Commonwealth who help children who've been abused. Those with Judy's Place say as many schools dismiss for summer break, fewer cases of child abuse will be reported. So it's up to community members to step up and report abuse if they see or have suspicions that it is happening. Um, if you make a referral, you may be ch saving a child's life. And, and I have seen that happen where a referral from somebody who just happened to see the child in the store or at a restaurant and there, there were high concerns of the way a child was being treated and literally that referral, you know, later they realized that that referral probably saved that child's life. Those with Judy's Place say although it can be difficult to make that call to report child abuse, you are legally obligated to report abuse if you have seen it or if you have reasonable suspicion abuse is taking place. We have more information on the signs of abuse on our website at WYMT.com. Former Kentucky State Representative Herbert Hubie Collins will be laid to rest Wednesday. He died on Friday at the Highlands ARH at the age of 86. Collins served for more than 25 years in the state legislature. Colleagues say he was a big advocate for education. Representative Bobby McCool says Collins could work with legislators on both sides of the aisle. Well, ju just his passion for the people. And, and certainly his commitment and openness, uh, very, uh, very transparent in what he did. And certainly that I want to glean off of those things as well and take those to the state as I, as I go forward. Johnson County Judge Executive Mark McKenzie released a statement on Collins' death. You can read that on our website at WYMT.com. His funeral will be held at 1 p.m. tomorrow at the Jones Preston Funeral Home Chapel. A Kentucky candidate for governor wants to disqualify one of his GOP primary opponents. Eric Dieters claims Kelly Kraft has not been a Kentucky resident long enough to run. He says voting records show that she's one year short of the six year requirement. Now the Herald Leader is disputing Dieters information. They say the Fayette County Clerk's Office confirms Kraft has been registered here since 1991. Kraft has used an Oklahoma address for some campaign donations. Dieter says unless he sees proof of residency, he'll file a lawsuit. President Biden is officially running for the White House once again, setting up a possible rematch between the current president and former President Donald Trump in 2024. A recent CBS News poll found 55% of Democratic voters want President Biden to run again despite his age. The incumbent would be 86 years old at the end of a second term. Also tonight, Senator Bernie Sanders said he will not challenge the sitting president. The ISIS leader behind the 2021 suicide bombing at the Kabul airport in Afghanistan is dead. 13 U.S. service members died in the terror attack and 45 others were hurt. At least 170 Afghans were also killed. 
The White House did not release the terrorist name, but described the senior Islamic State leader killed by the Taliban as the mastermind of the assault. That deadly attack during the chaotic withdrawal is considered one of the darkest moments of President Biden's presidency. Pentagon officials say the Taliban did not realize they had killed the planner of the bombing and are only now finding out that they did their bitter enemy, the United States, a favor. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, doctors say strep throat cases are on the rise. What they believe is behind that increase. Plus, showers have our name on it as we head later in this week. Perhaps not tomorrow, but they're on the way. Tracking the latest after this. What do we believe about people?